Yeah, like me, me. I was, I was especially shocked because, like, even if you guys haven't seen that season, you literally just interviewed that guy two weeks earlier. And on top of that, another thing that makes it worse, Jen, who is just as worse. Jen is uh, like Chica. I know I'm giving you shit, but comparing to you and Jen, Jen is the worst of them all. That motherfucker doesn't know shit. Imagine if she's watching us right now, she would beat your ass. <laughs> Listen, she has her, tried. She ha yes. True story. She has tried to beat my ass. And this is another true story. Me and her oh, You're in so much trouble when I tell her this. <laughs> me and her, I don't give a f she knows she knows where I live and she knows and I know exactly where she lives. Okay? Me and her, when we were uh in high school together, we used to do sparring because she did kickboxing. And I did Kenpo originally. And um, have you forgotten that I also did Muay Thai and Taekwondo? Yes, I know about that. And I well, and not I Taekwondo, do, it's just uh, Japanese karate. Me and Jen used to spar a lot. Because mm -hmm. she knew how to fucking fight. And she will tell you the story about how she whooped some sorority bitch's ass while in, while in college. She's proud of that moment. And I'm proud for her. Wait, but, really? She beat someone ass, someone's so, ass in college? So, but yeah, before, before we get into the podcast, people, a true story. So, Jen and I were freshmen in, uh, in college, right? And mm -hmm. she was, she was uh, doing rush reads. She was trying to be part of the sorority. And uh, me and my homegirl, who knew Jen in high school, were like, are you really, are you sure you want to do this, right? And she's like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, you do know that's the shit that goes down in sororities, right? And she's like, yes, I do. I'm like, okay, just let me know if, you're, if you need me or anything, right? So she never told me this until like a year or two later after I asked her what happened to the sorority. This is after she broke up with her, boy, her uh, ex-boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. So she got into a fight with um this one broad from the story that she was trying to go into because she kept spreading rumors and shit and jen roasted her ass and called the really? police on her because she tried breaking into her dorm right so she went to jen's dorm and tried to break in right like she was trying, she was arguing with jen's roommates right mm -hmm. jen on some savage before she before pre-crisis jen because jen's a karen now <laughs> jen <laughs> Fucking Spartan kicked this bitch into a fucking wall. Where exactly? Yeah, in where? The, in the fucking chest. Where she didn't use spinning bird kick. How could she kick that high on the chest? By because punching in the chest area. It's like one of the strongest. No, she didn't punch. She kicked. She oh. kicked. And I think, and she had shoes on. She had, because Jen used to wear chucks a lot. Oh. Jen kicked That would have been very painful, but I'm proud of her for doing that. Jen kicked this bitch. With low top chucks on. And I ain't gonna lie, it was kinda hot when she told me about it. So, in case you guys did not follow me on, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, no, on Instagram. Earlier today, I got a package from Hasbro. No, I don't mean Has, I, I, no, Hasbro itself themselves did not send me this. I just want everyone, I wanna be very clear. Hasbro Toys. Not send me this. Apparently, someone else did, and I know exactly who it was. And if you're watching this right now on Twitch, Dagger Boy from Morpher Network sent me a Psycho Psycho Green Lightning Collection action figure. Ooh. Uh, I make fun of him a lot because he's been he's bought mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars worth of uh Lightning Collection toys mm -hmm. from Power Rangers. He needs to stop. And, and I have told him. He, 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 I've jokingly said you either need to get help or you need to get some poontang. But and for anyone that wants to know, what poontang means means vagina. Um, he needs some wop. He needs some wop. Are you wop really? Oh, you know what? <laughs> Let's get started. So our opening piece of news, this is breaking news that happened immediately after our podcast last weekend. And Jen, shout out to our girl Jen, and Jen, if you are here, uh, if you're in the chat, um, you suck. <laughs> um, we have- Be nice our, to her. I go, nigga, I don't give a shit. I'm joking. I, I, look, look, no one, listen, I'm gonna say this right now. No one else can make fun of her in this podcast except me. I have full privilege about that. No one messes with her except me. Anyways, I mean, no, no, y'all can't. Okay. Anyways, Street Fighters Yoshino, the producer of Street Fighter Yoshino Ono, um, is leaving 
uh, Capcom, and this was um, actually Twitter. He broke this uh, down on Twitter, and I will actually read his thing on Twitter real quick, and we'll get into what Kotaku had to say because that's where well, that's how uh, we found out. I found out because Kotaku did it. This is what Ono had to say as this is loading up on Twitter. He says, Dear Street Fighter Series players and fighting community members, there's been many unexpected events uh, occur globally in 2020, especially COVID-19 has been specifically significantly affecting many people's lot, life and health all over the world. I'm praying that all of you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy. Since Capcom Cup in 2013, the Capcom Pro Tour has become an annual event because of the continued tremendous support from the players and fighting game community members in the world. We at Capcom had many internal discussions about the format for CPT 2020. It's Took a long time for us to decide the format for this year but we believe that conducting the event itself would re repay those who had uh, who has been supporting the cpt regardless of what the format is needless to say i understand there has been some criticisms about this particular format however i'm fully convinced that it is important to shed light on the various um hopes and keeping the event even uh, in this way additionally i'm extremely grateful that so many players and fighting game community members and uh and it's related individuals have been supporting us that so that we can make the cpt happen this year i've been with street fighter brand for a long time experienced good times bad times and even non-existent times my heart is filled with appreciation to those players who have been uh giving warm and kind support on the brand especially uh little over the past decade or so as all the activities on the street fighter brand regained sunshine and grew its uh liveliness and now after serving almost thir 30 years at capcom i am leaving the company in in this summer this means that i will resign my position as the brand manager uh, for capcom's various uh titles including street fighter and he says this capcom staff in the new generation will continue taking care of street fighter brand and leading the world warriors and i do believe that they will continue making street fighter extraordinary i will look forward to seeing the new street fighter brand and how it's going to be expanded as just one of the regular gamers next time around I've been trying to contact those whom I've gotten to work with in the past about resignation. However, it's quite difficult to reach out to all the people I've associated with throughout my career for almost three decades. So I'd like to humbly ask you kindly, uh, your kindly, kind understanding. When the opportunity comes, I'd like to extend warm greetings and my appreciation to those individuals and companies I've had a chance to work with. Again, to many players, FGC and its operations syst uh, staff and all the Street Fighter fans, thank you so much for your continued support. I regret that as a Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter Series executive producer, wasn't able to do a sure you can together with you uh, at each event in 2020. So please allow me to shout out as my, my closest statement in this message to you. Sure you can. And yeah, guys, Ono's gone. Ono's resigned from Street uh, from Capcom as executive producer and everything like that. Uh, executive producer Street Fighter. Um. I want to first say thank you all now. I, I, I want to say this right now because I, I, I know I, I likely not someone's going to try to do a deep dive. Like, Is this you uh, that I have talked about my, my, I talked about my issues about Street Fighter 5. Yes, I have issues with Street Fighter 5. Don't get it twisted. However, Street Fighter 5 has done so much for, for the fighting community and stuff. And I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about Street Fighter 5 after this because some announcements came out. But... It really sucks that Ono's leaving, but I understand this man. This man's been in the game for almost thirty years and was became the executive producer of Street Fighter about a decade ago, rough almost like over a decade ago. So, to Ono, I greatly appreciate you, dude. Despite the ups and the downs, as you said before, we've talked about and everyone in the surface has talked about it. Cross tech and everything like that. I do greatly appreciate you, dude. I, I appreciate you revitalizing Street Fighter, helping revitalize the fighting game genre, a genre that many of us believe to be dead because it was in the water for so long throughout the mid 2000s until Street Fighter 4 got announced. Um, we greatly appreciate it, dude. I know Jen, who is a huge Street Fighter 5 fan, appreciates you for everything. I want to say thank you for making my high school year really lit because i did play a lot of street fighter 4 and i played a lot of Marvel versus capcom origins 2 remaster and 3 and ult 3 thank you so much ono-san that's all i got to say um 
I don't know if anyone else has played Street Fighter, but I know a lot of y'all have probably been Catcon fans for the longest. Alec, I'll go with you, dude. What's your thoughts? Oh, no's leaving. Go ahead. Oh, man. Just, mm -hmm. I'm okay. not going to talk about Kotaku because we already, we already addressed Ono leaving, so go ahead. Um, I won't... I can make a joke right now, but like, seriously, like, I don't... Like, I wonder what kind of... But with him gone, like, I wonder what would be... Like, because he was... What's the senior producer for, like, a bunch of IP Capcom modes? So yeah. I wonder, like, without his influence, what would, what would those franchises become? Like... A lot of the franchises that Ono uh, looked over were probably been dead in the water, honestly. Like, let's see, Street Fighter was one of the, what could have been like some other ones? That would have been dead without him. Uh, I'm actually gonna look this up, but continue, go ahead. No, cause, I don't know, just, cause I wasn't that into Street Fighter growing up, like, in fact, you know, it's like, I didn't really play fighters, like traditional fighters, like, growing up, so I never, you know, like, I never know what, how important like he actually is because the closest thing i think of imagine nintendo was like miyamoto that's kind of like the vibe i'm getting when i wait because that's kind of the vibe we're getting when he or announced like he was i don't know just i wish i had more to say it's sad that he's gone right, i just so wonder like, what this franchise are going to be like now well, re real quick before i get to uh both uh, kabuto and uh and chica so this man's been like you said he's been for almost 30 years he's been a music he's been in pretty much in the music department for capcom he was the music producer for uh, uh saturday night slam he did the sound program for street fighter alpha and was the music uh, and was the uh sound producers for third strike alpha 3 uh breath of fire or he did spawn in the demon's hand as the uh sound producer on there, he worked on he helped uh, work on Dino Crisis 2, Devil May Cry 1, Heavy Metal, Onimushu 2, Chaos Legion, Resident Evil Outbreak as a CG modeling, as well as Outbreak 2. Um, he worked on Onimushu Dawn of Dreams, Dead Rising, Monster Hunter Frontier, Street Fighter 4, Tatsunoku vs. Capcom, um, Cross Tekkens, we talked about before, uh, Darkstalkers Resurrection. Ultra Street Fighter 4, and the last game he did, which was actually canceled, was Deep Down. So this, um, and he was actually in um, Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. So there you go. Um, Chica, thoughts? Go ahead. I gotta say, I feel like it's kind of like well, in, um, in that everybody go through whenever their producer is like being um, a cop con. It's kind of like the same feeling that I had when Kohima left uh, Konami, but even though I still hate the company itself, as I mean, you guys all know why I hate Konami now, because all the Metal Gear games were a lot better ever since Kohima was working with them, but I kind of felt the same way when Ono was leaving, but like I said, I mean, like how what, uh, you were saying that I wonder what the franchise is going to look like without, you know, Ono there, after all, he did last you know in my opinion i do think that there are going to be people who are like i think street fire will be in incapable hands because we, they've proven time and time again that if done right you like like not if done right when done right like people you can make a really good street fighter game Tree, again street fighter 4 the that like street fighter 4 was good super was fine uh arcade edition was okay but when ultra street fighter 4 came out everyone was mm -hmm. on ultra street fighter 4 because ultra street fighter 4 was Everything that Street Fighter 4 should have been from the start, but it just took some time to do. And all Street Fighter 4, in my opinion, is the best rendition of Street Fighter 4, like in my opinion. And again, like and uh Street Fighter 5, again, we've had I we talked about our issues with Street Fighter 5 in the past. Arcade edition did help out, but honestly, I think with the final season of uh, SF5 coming out next year and the new characters that they just announced which we'll talk about afterwards maybe sh uh, SF6 is going to be in capable hands I'm pretty sure about that I'm hoping that when that comes out it'll be a multi-plat because remember SF5 was only is only available for PS4 and PC so that's not a here nor there yeah but if you said that they're going to be doing fine fine with Street Fighter Street Fighter franchise, then I'm okay with it. All right, I'm so disappointed about what Konami did. We never talk about Metal Gear Survive. 
Dude, listen, when Kana I they actually had some news about Kanani, but I'm like, it's whatever, so. Kamado, thoughts, dude? Go ahead. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a scary idea when someone who has been associated with, like, a lot of really good franchises for a really long time ends up leaving. And the thing is, like, you know that those franchises have existed without those people in the past but the thing is the changes that happen during their specific run are just like so iconic at this point because you're just so used to them being in the castle uh, in the uh, cast and staff that like you don't it, it feels like uncertain that they're leaving like um like imagine uh uh what's it called if uh bayonetta didn't have kamiya or metal gear didn't have uh kojima or uh what's it called or if castlevania didn't have igarashi and you know like that's the kind of like uncertainty that some people would have to consider but the thing is who knows incapable like hands depending on whose hands it falls to it, it could be just as good and it could be better but there is always the fear that it could get worse and hopefully it'll get better instead you never know me like my stake in this is that i uh, is that while i'm not particularly a street fighters guy i am however a mega man and devil may cry kind of guy so you know let's just hope for the best and and to this gentleman you know thank you for the 30 years of service you've given us you yeah, know, 30 years is a long time to keep. look like for me, I haven't had held a job for more than five years thus far. But like this guy held a, a, a position for 30 years. So like that's something to be respected. Right. But like I said, thank you, Ono-san, for all the good time throughout Street Fighter, dude. And throughout and throughout Capcom, dude, for like, geez, this man's been again. This man's been in the game for almost 30 years, man. Like, that's a lot to say. So. We appreciate you, Ono. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much.